Coach, do you want to make an opening statement or go straight to questions? Well, I do want to say, I mean, Nebraska just played an outstanding game, and it took everything we had to win this game, obviously. You all saw it. And then I, I have to acknowledge our fans. I, I mean, they are amazing. They show up in Carver. They show up here. They show up in Dallas. They show up everywhere. And we are just so thankful for them. And, and I know I keep saying it, but I can't express it enough. I mean, they give us energy. They give us confidence. And they, you know, when we win, we want to share it with them. We really do. Um, you know, I thought we fought hard tonight, and we had to. It was not very often that we have fought from behind. That was our biggest deficit at halftime, and we just tried to reset at halftime. And um, I thought they came out in that third quarter was really good, really good. Um, you know, and then we lost the lead, and they fought back again. So I'm, I'm incredibly um, proud of our group. First question right here in the front. Yeah, Lisa, you talk, we always talk about how important in the postseason guard play is, and you guys are down eight with just a little over two minutes left, and it's it's your guards, not uh, Hannah was in there too, but it's your guards that just make big play after big play with, with Caitlin, with Kate, with Gabby. Can you just talk about having that kind of experience, especially on, at the guard play? Yeah, the, sen the leadership out here tonight was really good. Um, the second half, uh, exceptionally good. Um, you know, Caitlin hits that big three. We call a timeout. We're down at five. Now anything is possible with some defensive stops. Gabby Marshall comes to play defense. I mean, she worked so hard out there. She needs to ice bath for about two days straight because she worked really, really hard. Um, you know, Kate couldn't believe it when she was so wide open on that three. She looked down to make sure she was behind the three and then pops that for us. She has two really crucial threes for us. Um, you know, Sid, I'm so proud of Sid, too. Stepping in that starting position and then getting in the all-tournament team, um, she's just been waiting. She's been waiting for her chance. And, again, I, I just believe she was the sixth player of the year in our conference, and uh, she showed it tonight. Question here in the first row. Yeah, Coach, would, would you agree with Caitlin's assessment that uh, freshman, sophomore Caitlin wouldn't have won this game today? I agree. I mean, I think she has matured so much. Um, mentally um you know and that goes into emotions too uh we talk all about time control you know what you can control can't control officials you can't control that sort of thing and um she was able to bounce back and honestly you know she didn't have a very good first half you can maybe keep caitlin down for half you're not keeping her down for the whole game there's no way go ahead third row hey lisa uh chad lysico des moines register one of the early season storylines was Hannah Stolke at the foul line. She goes 11 for 13 in the tournament, knocks down two really big ones uh, really late. What were your thoughts when you see her at the line, and have you seen that growth kind of coming to this point? Yeah, and, and we weren't supposed to give the ball to Hannah in that situation, and that's my fault. I probably should have subbed her at that point, so completely my fault to put her in that situation. But you know what I'm so proud about with Hannah? She misses two, her only two of the tournament, steps back up and makes two. I, I, you know, that growth and, and how much Tanaya has worked with her. And, um, yeah, I mean, she's – Hannah's just special. I mean, look, at she has 25 points tonight. She's going against one of the best posts in America, has nine rebounds for us. She played really well. Question in the fourth row. Uh, hi, Lisa. Adam Jacoby, Rivals. Uh, Iowa had 25 assists on 33 made shots today, and and really a lot of assists uh, all tournament. What's it like for you as a coach to see that that teamwork, especially as it fuels the um, rally today? I mean, I love passing the ball, and um, you know, the first half we didn't do that as well as what we're capable of doing it. But I just think it's such pretty basketball when you're all playing as one and everybody's on the same page passing the ball. I mean, it wasn't today's game, but yesterday's game. I mean, there was probably like seven hockey assists before Gabby Marshall knocks down the three. I watched that play a couple times last night. It was just beautiful passing. And you know when they're passing like that, they're, they're in sync. You know, there's synergy on the floor when they're passing the ball like that. And I love that. I don't like just playing around the three-point line. Um, I like to be able to draw and dish and have good floor spacing. And so I think we did a better job of that in the second half. 
Question in the second row. Yeah, David Eichel, 24-7 Sports. Uh, Lisa, kind of going back to Hannah, just the mental growth you talk about. You know, she misses two free throws, gets an offensive rebound, makes the two free throws. Just from a mental side and her confidence that you guys have talked all year about, confidence is the big thing for her. It just seemed like she really kind of stepped into her moment, maybe just grew up a little bit more today too. Yeah, Hannah Stalky is so talented. Um, and really the only thing holding her back was her own confidence and, and mental. And we just keep pouring into her because she is such a beautiful athlete. And, you know, I, I'm just so proud of her. I, I just want her to continue to own it, allow herself to be great. That's what she has to do. And she will be great. Question here in the front. Hey, Lisa, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. You talk about Caitlin playing emotionally, and obviously that can be a good thing and a bad thing, and the growth has been so key for her. What are sort of the points that you saw her learn how to play with it in a good way, and how much of that is work she's done on her own versus conversations she's had with the coaching staff? So I think you asked Chantel again, like, what was about, like, how has she matured with the... Yeah, like playing with the right kind of emotion, mm. not letting it be. Yeah, yeah. Caitlin is is very emotional, like passionate. She is passion, right? And she had to learn how to play with emotion, but not so much that it took her over the edge. And she's learned to do that. Um, I mean, it's been a lot of us talking about you got to control the controllables. You can't let you know other people take you out of your game. Um, she's worked hard on it. But I think my staff has held her accountable, and I think Kate Martin has held her accountable to that as well. And when your peers can hold you accountable, sometimes that means a whole lot more than when it comes from coaches. And I think that's what Kate Martin does so well is she isn't afraid to, to hold her teammates accountable. And when you're talking 20-year-old to 20-year-old, that's hard to do. Um, so I'm, you know, I think that Kate Martin has helped her growth as well. Right here in the front. Dargan Souther with the Des Moines Register. Lisa, you mentioned you guys really haven't had a game hole like this where you're, you know, behind the whole way. That March tension kind of closes in in the last little bit. I know this team is confident in its experiences and what it's been through, but to get a game like that right before the NCAA tournament and survive it, um, how pivotal can that be for what's ahead? Anytime you can put yourself in these situations and you come out positively, I mean, you can fall back on it, right? I mean, even at halftime, we said, hey, we're down 11. We were up 12 at their place. You know, we went back to the opposite, you know, their place, and they came back and got us, so let's do it to them this time. Um, so I think anytime you can draw upon past experiences, especially favorable ones, um, it, it definitely builds your confidence. We're going to go with last question right here. Um, Coach, you think back to October. We, we were asking, how are you going to adjust without Monica and McKenna? And here you are all these months later winning another Big Ten championship and potentially having a number one seed. Right now you guys are in line for that. Can you talk about that? the growth of this squad to be able to do that and what would a number one seed mean to you to have that? You know, everybody knew, you know, how much we lost last year and everybody kept talking about how much we lost. And we kept saying, look how much we have. I mean, we have a lot. Um, Hannah was ready to burst on the scene. You have the best player in America. Kate and Gabby, God bless them, they come back, you know, for another year because they feel something special. Um, Sid Falter just kept getting better and better as the year went on. Um, Kylie, you know, a year after her surgery now. So, yeah, I think we just focused on what we have instead of what we didn't have. And... We felt like we had a good team, and I, or certainly our foreign trip helped us, having those 10 extra practices, going overseas and playing. All that really helped. Um, I think we do deserve a number one seed. If we don't get it, oh, well, it's okay. It's okay. I, I mean, that's life. Uh, we can't control that. But I think it would just mean a lot to our program and how far we've come to have that recognition. But if we don't get it, we're going to stay, play the same basketball we would if we were one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter. Thank you, Coach. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you.